Getting right back into it here, analyzing this Eagles run game against the Packers defense. So we're here for part three. We're late in the third quarter. Let's see what the Eagles are dialing up here on first and goal on the five-yard line. So as I look to play roll here, it looks like the Eagles are running this version of QB bash once again, but we're actually hitting the fly sweep here. We've seen them run this a couple times in the first three quarters here, but it's always been Jalen Hurts keeping this to run the QB counter. So here's a little different variation of it. We see this is where he hands off the sweep. So once again, the QB bash means back away. So the back is going to be running away from the run game inside, which is GT counter. So Jalen Hurts has the option to keep this around the GT counter, as we've seen in the first two episodes, or he can hand the ball off to the running back here on the sweep motion. All he'll be doing is reading the end man on the line of scrimmage. If he crashes with the pullers, he's going to have the corner, and if he hands the ball off here, we see we got two defenders for only two blockers. So all this is trying to do is even the numbers out, either out on the perimeter or inside the box. We see once again here, where all we're going to do is read this end man on the line of scrimmage. Does he crash, or does he expand with the sweep? As we already seen it happen... It looks like the end man is going to crash down just enough to give Jalen Hurts the give read. It gets pretty close here, but he's able to do it. Or he hands that ball off, and we see number seven here make a great job flying outside of the box. It's really good sideline to sideline speed to get out there and make that play. But once again, this is all simple, just numbers game. The offense is trying to outnumber the defense, whether it's on the perimeter or in the box. And here's another example of it, picking up a good three, four yard gain, getting them down to the one yard line. So here we go, jumping to this next play, second and one, on the one, perfect situation, and a flag. Not ideal, it looks like it's going to be a false start on the Eagles, so let's jump past that, let's get right back into the action here. So once again, we're, we're moved back here right on the six-yard line, it looks like we're running that vertical zone, but we're tagging an RPO to it here. So this isn't a play-action play, this isn't anything like that, this is a true RPO. All Jalen Hurts, it's hard to tell exactly who his read key will be in this, but... Usually he'll be reading the safety here. If the safety's down in the box, fitting the run, he's going to have this gift route, which a lot of people call it. it's a pre-snap read. He's got the leverage to throw the gift route. When we see that safety here creeping up down into the box, trying to balance this out. Because we see the safety's in the box. They have seven defenders here for only six blockers. So they're missing a guy here. So they have to fix the run game here. They're going to fix that by tagging this little 10-yard out route by the number one receiver. So as I let the play roll here, we see that safety here. He's fitting into the run game. Nobody's here underneath that out route by A.J. Brown. It allows Jalen Hurts just to pull this, and it's a nice, easy completion for a touchdown. So once again, I'll flip it to the tight shot here. So this is just that vertical zone. He's going to be cutting off him. They're going to be doubling this up here. They'll double this up here, and he'll be out on this by himself. And we see everybody's had it up besides the safety. The safety's coming down to be the extra run fitter in the box to get a free guy for the back. But because he's in the box, we're getting numbers out on the perimeter with A.J. Brown having a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the corner, and this is why they paid A.J. Brown this kind of money was to make plays like this on the perimeter. So as I look to play roll here, when you see that safety number 31 fits, Jalen Hurts pulls it, throws an easy completion right out onto the perimeter to his one-on-one -on -one matchup. Once again, it's just another really good example of them evening, making the numbers even, either in the run game or out on the perimeter. They're just keeping the defense honest and punishing the defense and running and throwing the ball where the defense isn't. So here we go, QB bash. Once again, we've seen a lot of this so far. Another look at it, and here we see the quarterback keep it. So we saw down to the goal line, he handed off this fly sweep, but now he keeps it. So once again, it's the exact same play here. He's going to read this defender. We're two for two out on the perimeter. This is the extra hat. If he fits into the run game, we have nobody to account for him. If he fits out here, we have nobody to account for him. So where, whichever way he goes, we'll go the opposite of. So as I let the play roll here, we're going to see he comes down. He comes upfield to slow play, the, slow play the fly sweep here. Gives the key for Jalen Hurts to keep it. And we see what this does. So in the box, like I said, it's another. It's, it's the same thing as before. QB bash inside the box. We're going to down block, down block. He's going to come here. He's going to pull around to kick out 91. He's going to wrap around for 7. And the tight end should be down blocking to 58. We have this defensive end that's outside of the screen out here. We can't account for him because we don't have enough blockers. So what will we do to fix that? We're going to read him. So the quarterback will read him. So he's in this wide night alignment, which already gives Jalen Hurts a good idea of what to do with the ball here. So I'm going to let the play roll. And we see he creeps into the box, reads him. Doesn't fly with the fly sweep, and now we got the numbers advantage again. Just look how this creases outside. We got a great 
We're building this great wall inside. Really good down blocks. 89's got to keep tracking down to 58. We got the kick out here. And we got him leading up for number seven. You can see where this crease is starting to form for Jalen Hurts. Once again, it's all about just running where the defense is not. Evening out the numbers. It's impossible to load a box if you dial up these read options and RPOs because you're going to constantly punish defenses that want to put seven, eight defenders in the box to try to just sell out for the run game. So here we go again. It was a good pickup there on first down, and now we're getting back into the drop back action. We're not really looking for the drop back action. Maybe we get a little bit of a Jalen Hurts scramble here. Good pickup, but we're looking for the run game. We're not looking for the drop back. So let's jump ahead here. Third quarter clock's ticking. Another quick spacing concept. Looks like it's top of the screen. Good read there. Flat defenders late to get out to the arrow by the running back. Running back gets a good completion or good catch and run there. A little quick game concepts. We got the play action here. Nothing too fancy. We're looking for the run game. We're not looking too much for pass plays here. So let's keep scrolling. Till we get here we go. We're getting back into the run game here. So we get into this trip set out here to the field. Into the boundary of the single set tight end. It looks like all we're running here looks like trap. Looks like looks like it looks like an looks like a version of trap here. So let's see what they dial up. Looks like it could be a busted play. No, it's not a busted play. So we're dialing up trap here. And we saw them run this with the tackle, but now we're going to see with the interior of the offensive line and how it's going to offer some easy blocks for them. So let's just see. Lane Johnson is going to release vertical. He's going to release to cut this off. He's going to, he should block that. He's going to pull around, kick the D end, and then we got the big left tackle, Jordan Maiata, coming across to kick the three tech, and they should be able to crease right up inside. So let's see how this looks. So at the play roll here, we see good kick out by Jordan Maiata, and we're fitting up really well on the second level. I mean, look at the second level blocks here by Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson, getting latched on. I mean, he's six yards off the line of scrimmage. They're four yards off the line of scrimmage, and we have the crease there to get another really nice gain here. He slides right through, pushes the pile forward. What is that, a 10-yard gain? Really good call. A lot of trap, a lot of pull in their offensive linemen. It's what, you, it's what happens when you have a really good offensive lineman like the Eagles. So here we go. We looks like we're dialing up an RPO here. So all we're doing here on the perimeter, as Jalen Hurts sticks this sticks the, the ball in the back's belly here, he's going to be keying outside here to whoever the run fitter is. So one of these two guys have to fit the run. If he fits the run, he's going to just throw this hitch right behind him. They're going to run double hitches here. If he fits the run, he's so far off the ball, we don't have to worry about it. But once again, we see inside the box, we have six blockers for four down linemen and two backers. We're six for six inside the box. It's perfect. The only time we're going to have an issue is if we fit, the defense fits an extra run fitter. So we have the safety or the corner here to the field. So as I let the play roll, keep an eye on this corner here, right here at the bottom of the screen. Look how he fits the run. So as he triggers hard, trying to be that extra hat in the run game, Jalen Hurts sees it, takes the free access throw outside for an easy hitch. Looks like the receiver wasn't ready for it. Looks like they weren't on the same page. But we see he fits in as the seventh defender, and it allows his corner, or the excuse me, the receiver, just to run this simple hitch. It should be easy yardage here for the offense. Clearly, though, they're, the receiver and the quarterback are not on the same page. But you see if they were on the same page where this happens. And inside the, inside the box, they're not running anything fancy. It's the exact same call that they had earlier in the game, this, this tackle wrap play. So, like I said, we're going here. We're solo out on that. We're solo here. He's going to climb, seal that. He's down blocking here. He's going to expand the DN for width, and the tackle will pull around. And we see how we're 6-for-6 six six in the box here. It's a really nice call here. Got even numbers in the box. But this corner is going to come off the edge and try to be that free hitter to hit the back in the backfield. But because by doing that, though, he vacates his spot out in the perimeter. They got their 2-1-2 two -two matchup out on the perimeter, and they just weren't able to execute there. Receiver was not on the same page. But you see where it's all about the numbers advantage. You're either going to go to the 2-1-2 two -two matchup or the 6-on-6 six -six matchup in the box. So no matter what the defense does, it's hard for them to protect or defend this style of offensive play. They're wrong no matter what they do. Here we go. Looks like we're running a little bit of a triple option here. Could be a triple option or just a read option. So once again, we're going to have this look. We saw it in the first couple of episodes. They run this swing motion here. 
All they're doing is reading this backside backer. If he expands for the motion, we're just going to work this read option inside the box. But if he stays and fits the run inside, we can throw this swing motion because we got two blockers for two defenders. It's all about the numbers advantage. In this instance, as we let the play roll here, we're going to see this backside backer. He expands out. Now we're three over three outside, or three over two blockers. So the defense has three defenders for two blockers. Not a favorable run matchup. So now we're going to go back inside and just run our trip, traditional read option play here. Because we got five blockers. So here we got one for one. They should double up here. Excuse me, they should double up here. They're probably going to ID out to that. They're going to double up to here. And then the only defender, he's being dealt with by that swing motion. So he's taken care of by he's taken care of by playing the swing motion. So now the only unblocked defender that's left in the box is the defensive end. So we don't have a blocker to take care of him. So what we're going to do is read him. So it'll be traditional read option. If he comes upfield and plays the running back, Jalen Hurts has the option to pull this and get around outside. If he comes upfield, he's just going to hand this ball off. And like I had drawn up, we're five for five. Five to five blockers. Five blockers for five defenders. So with that in mind, let's watch how the defensive end plays this and see if Jalen Hurts makes the correct read. So as I let the play roll here, square shoulders, shuffling down the line of scrimmage. It's a good call. It just looks like the, the left tackle here maybe or the left guard here gets beat across his face. It's a good play. This is probably the first play all night we've seen a Packers D lineman in the backfield. So sometimes you, the defensive linemen get paid as well. They're going to win some reps as well on your offensive line. Really good example of that read option, just pairing concepts together, making it hard to defend. So here we go. Looks like we're running trap here against a funky look. Creases really well. So let's cut this to the tight shot and let's see what we got here. So yeah, it looks like this tackle trap play is going on again. So he's going to come out here. Looks like he's going to release for seven. He's going to be responsible here. We're here. We're here. And we're going to pull this and we're going to trap that, de that defensive tackle. So that's a, it's a good call. We see it's a funky blitz look. We get manned up. I mean, look at Jason Kelsey here on this middle linebacker. He has no hope. Jordan Mayotta does a good job here. We get the kick out. We see where this crease is. Number seven, the ball's handed off right now. And number seven is still bailing out of this look, not even seeing the running back have the ball until he's seven yards away from the line of scrimmage. You're going to get good yardage anytime that happens. So you got the QB sneak, traditional Eagle special there. Picks up a big time first down. They keep the chains moving once again. Now it's first and 10. Ball in 33. Let's see what they dial up here. Looks like they're running. This could be counter. Looks like counter. And it busts for a big time play. Let's see if they tag an RPO to the top of the screen here. Doesn't look like there's an RPO attached. So they're just running traditional counter. So let's jump here. So this is GH counter. So very similar to GT counter, but now we're adding a tight end into the picture. So 12 personnel. So they're going to down block here. He's going to down block on the three tech. He should down block onto the nose. He's going to down block there. He's going to gap hinge for 55. Excuse me. It should be. Oh, actually, let's see. The Packers have three defenders for seven blockers in the box. So it's not. They're, they fit it up even numbers once again. So we're going to draw that up. He's going to come around. He's going to kick that out. He should track all the way back to the backside backer. Then we're going to gap pinch here, like I said, and then he's going to pull around and wrap around for the front side backer. So let's see how this pans out. Really good, really good look here. Let's see. They're out of pistol. They didn't, haven't ran a lot of pistol tonight. We get through really good blocks here. I mean, look at, look at the space. Watch the left tackle here, Jordan Mayada. Look at the movement he gets. Washes it down. Look at that crease that's forming here. 89 almost misses his block, but as I let the play roll here, you're going to see he does a really nice job to just finish, wash him out of there. I mean, look at that crease. Great kick out here by the left guard. The tight end's free fitting up here on a corner. Exactly what you want to see. And I mean, this has fitted up really nice. So as I, I'll just let the play roll from the top here. Just keep an eye on these blocks. Look at that crease. That's just great blocking. It's not the scheme there. That's just straight up overpowering and dominating the opposing defensive line here. Really good stuff to see. I mean, look at Jordan Mayotta. He's throwing the three tech, three, three gaps over. Watch 68. Throws him over, climbs up to number seven. What a great job there. Gets all the way down a nice 20-yard gain. Phenomenal blocking by the offensive line. It's easier to run when you have the, those type of lanes. 
Looks like this is a play action play. Looks like it's just this double in, this double post, double digs, whatever you, whatever you like to call it. So I'm going to keep rolling here. We want to see the run game. We don't really want to see the pass play. Second and 10. It was an incomplete pass. Just keep running the ball. Looks like we got outside zone here. Really good movement inside. I mean, look at 62 in the 62 in the guard right here. They're just climbing for so much width. Or not for width. They're climbing with so much vertical movement. So here we go. We got outside zone. Looks like 77's in here. He's a backup. Looks like he just doesn't finish on his block. So let's draw this up. We're going to take outside zone steps here. Outside zone steps here. Outside zone steps here. Working that up. Hopefully to get vertical to cut off 55, I think, whoever that middle linebacker is. He's an outside zone footwork here, outside zone footwork here. He's going to track up, most likely getting the corner. So as I let the play roll here, just keep an eye on the interior of the offensive line here, especially the center and right guard. Gets really good movement, carries them vertical, and now we see this crease start to open up here. We see this wall starting to get built. Boston Scott reads it nice, gets ready to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It's just we're missing one block here, number 77. I think this was his first play of the night because the back of, or the starting left guard went down. So he can't get his head into the end. We would like to see this head on the, ins, or the inside shoulder, but he fails to get there, and it causes this issue to happen. We see, lets him fall off, make the play. Makes it only a three-yard gain instead of what could have been a touchdown. So not a big deal. Obviously, they've been running the ball effectively all night. If you have one or two mistakes, you can't really get too upset about it. So let's keep rolling here. Another drop back game. We're going to keep scrolling past that. See what we got going on here. Drop back. I think they kicked the field goal here. Or was that a touchdown? Could have been a touchdown. More drop back. Really good play by Jalen Hurts. I think that was the touchdown. 37 or Yeah. 37-30, we got this tackle trap once again. We're wrapping our tackle around. We've seen this a dozen times. We'll let it play from the tight shot. So here we go. We're going to wrap the left tackle here. He's going to – oh, he's just going to clean up for the guard. So here we go. Once again, we're finally seeing this Packers D-line D line actually make some plays. So he should be wrapping around for number seven. But as we see, 56 gets beat across his face here, gets swam. So 68 just takes the most dangerous and allows number seven to be the free run fitter. Fails to wrap up, though, and that's where the back is making plays for his offensive line. So these last few drives, we see that the Packers D-line is responding, finally getting off blocks, finally playing behind the line of scrimmage, creating space for their defense to work. It's just a shame that they couldn't do this earlier in the game, obviously. Here we go. We're down up another read option play here. Now we're going to get some arc, arc, arc action here to lead block. So if you look in the box, we're taking care of the, the first five in the box. So there, there. Here, and now we, we see we have these two blockers here to take care of these two guys. But sometimes it's hard to have a receiver get in and dig out a safety. So instead, they're going to arc release, arc release here, and they're going to read this unblocked man. The tight end will arc release for 31, and then we'll get the receiver out in the alley on a corner, which is a much more favorable matchup. So we have five for five in the box. If he crashes down the line of scrimmage, we can pull this and get out on the perimeter. So let's watch what this defensive end does. Number 55, does he crash or does he, he crashes hard to the mesh point? Jalen Hurts keeps it here. The backer does a nice job getting back out to the alley. We have the lane here. We just got to we just gotta push this, cut this back up vertical. If we see this backer expand for width, they're gap exchanging. So we got to get back up field and get through that crease. Looks like Jalen Hurts doesn't see it or he sees it. It's just a really good open field play by the middle linebacker to freeze him up. So the scheme was definitely there. Just needs to be executed a little bit better by the quarterback and the right tackle finishing his block. Got the drop back action. We don't really want. To, we don't really need to see any drop back game. Here we go again. We got that tackle trap. That tackle. That long pull for the tackle. Look at him get all the way across. Misses the kick out. Good play here by the defensive end. Throwing that tackle off him. Number seven also gets off the block here. Or he gets left unblocked. So here we go. We got six guys in the box. It just looks like we are mis-ID'd here. So should be we should have someone here. We should have someone. It should honestly be here. Actually, let's let's let him let's let him roll. Let's see what happened here. Looks like 69 picks up here. Jason Kelsey's climbing to 51 here. So we're hatted up, hatted up. Should be hatted up there. We're hatted up and we're hatted up. We're going to get the kick out right here. So if we can get that wall built right there, we should have a lane. But it looks like 68 
Must be mis id here because he either misses or just doesn't know that he's supposed to get number seven. Leaves number seven free. Luckily, the running back's able to make some people miss and get out on the perimeter and pick up a nice positive yardage play here. Try to buzz through these last few plays here. GT counter again. We see they've been running this all night long. We're reading this defensive end. We're either going to have the two-on-two -two matchup outside or we're going to have the five-for-five, five, or excuse me, the six-for-six six in the box. Actually, they have the numbers advantage in the box anyway, so they should be a keep no matter what, really. But we see the defensive end. He crashes hard down the line of scrimmage, cues the running back, or cues the quarterback to give it to the running back, gets him out on the perimeter. We got one blocker for one defender, one blocker for one defender. And the safety is that free run fitter here that is able to come down and make a really nice play to keep this from going all the way to the house. So flip it from the tight, flip it to the tight shot here. Honestly, we have the numbers advantage in the box where we probably should have just ran the counter there, but it looks like the blocks got messed up. We've seen this all night long, GT counter. Nothing new. We've seen the read. So it's just a couple different variations. Third and five, got to have it type situation. They hand the ball off. Let's flip it here to the tight shot. See what they dial up here out of 11 personnel. Trap again. We get another version of that trap. We've been seeing it all night long. And it's just been gashing the, this Packers defense. So he's going to release for the backer. He's going to be money here. Or he's going to be solo there. He's going to dig out wherever the C-gap defenders. He's going to release, release vertical 50, for 51. Guard's going to pull the kick out the end. Tackle's going to pull around and kick out the nose tackle. And this should be a really nice crease and wall getting built right here, as we can see. Leaves the back one-on-one -on -one with 31, the safety. So let's play roll here. Let's see what happens. Good job. 97 is coming off balance, was not ready for it. Right guard does just enough, gets just enough that down lineman. Springs Kenneth Gainwell free. Good play, good play call. Third and five, probably wasn't expecting it. This D-line was ready to tee off, try to get back to the passer, and they get heavy-handed, and they stumble forward and cannot make the play in the backfield. Really nice play call by the Eagles there, catching that Packers D-line off guard. Here we go again. We've seen this earlier in the breakdown. GT, GT, excuse me, GH counter here. So same, same, same principles apply here. We're going to down block here. We're going to down block here. We're going to down block there. Down block here. Gap hinge. Pull the kick out. We got 81 pulling for the front side backer. So we're headed up. We're just going to lead. We're going to, we're going to hang number seven, and hopefully he does not be able to scrape all the way over the top. But as we watch 89 here, goes, misses the block. That's, that's a killer for the play. Number seven is unblocked in this situation. So we are, it looks like, it looks like it's honestly mis id and 89 should almost track back to 7. We should almost pull for 51 and hang the corner. We don't, though. We have to live with it. 89 misses his block on the backer, and now I'm all over the place. Look at that. I just lost. Look at me. I lost our lost our place in the film. Let's speed back up. So when you run GH counter, it's really about being ID'd properly. So there they go. They pick up that first down. And as I flip back here to the tight shot, we're going to see... 89 releases, misses the block on 51, seven scrapes over the top. Now we have two unblocked backers right into the back's face. Never going to be a good story, as we can see, blows up the run play. Rarely does has that happen tonight, but, you know, sometimes the defense gets some good plays. Here we go. Something really good the Packers defense has done all night is playing out on the perimeter and expanding for width. They definitely want nothing to do with the run game in the box, but they have done a really good job at expanding out and playing these screens and runs on the perimeter. So, Little little screen here. Offensive line gets out free. The Packers defense just responds better there to blow up the play. Here we go. Third and seven. Got to have it once again. What do we dial up? Looks like we're dialing up trap again here. Let's see. Yep, another version of this trap play they always like to run. Looks like 56, a little caught off guard here. Looks like him and the tight end probably aren't on the same page. So he should probably be kicking the DN. This tight end should release for the corner. We should release for number seven here. We should probably pick up pick up the nose here, probably carry him vertical here. I'm going to pull this tackle around. Actually, excuse me, that's not right. Let me see it. I'm going to watch this one more time, see how they see how they coach us up. Ah. So we're going to pull the tackle to kick the three tech. He should pull around and kick the defensive end. The tight end looks like, like, looks like he's wrong. He should climb to the corner, climb there. They're going to double team this vertical to seal off that backside backer. And as we see here, it should be a really nice crease inside. So let's watch what happens. Like I said, 
You see that tight end, 89, on the front side. He's going to have a mental error here, blocking the DN. Looks like 56 gets a little confused here. Not for sure how they coach it, but really good block by the tackler. Look at that. Gets just enough, chips him just enough to knock that nose tackle out of the path to give just enough crease. Hard to do that when we're leaving 91 off the edge, leaving a defensive end unblocked to come crashing down the line to make the play in the backfield. It's tough, but still a nice pickup to make it a manageable. Or actually, they did they get the first off that? Looks like that. Oh, no, they kicked the field goal here. That's right. Kick the field goal. We get the ball back with 107 left. We need one first down to seal the game. We run outside zone here. Let's see how it looks. Blocks are there. It looks like we just nobody gets off to 51. We need someone on this combination here. So they're going to push out to this, out to this. Someone needs to come off and pick up 51. We're pushing out to this. If we can get this expanded out, we can get this walled off here. We got a really good play brewing. We got a really good play brewing. But if we watch 69 here, keep an eye on 69, hangs too long. Doesn't get off to 51. 51's there to fit up and make a tackle. But if I freeze it right here, if we can get this walled off. If we can get that, that combination between the guard and center to cut that off, we have the back up here one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And we've seen Miles Sanders all night long making plays. That's a play that I think he could win on. But once again, it's a small mental error. We still pick up three, four yards. We just got it. It wasn't really a primary run play all night, that outside zone. So it's just a new look. So here we go again. Go right back to the outside zone out of pistol. Let's see how it looks. Let's flip to the tight shot here and see how this looks. So once again, we see this expand for they're going to try to reach reach realistically they're not going to be able to get it so if we can get this expanded for width and get a wall built here we can get this nose tackle reach up to 51 we can see this lane will be right here to hit right up to the safety so let's see what happens let's play roll we're getting some good movement here but we actually get it reached here which is really good the guard reaches them 62 climbs cuts off 51 gets just enough of them uh Right tackle here just needs to decide to turn that into a crank. He keeps fighting to reach it, and it allows that DN to fall off inside. The DN doesn't fall off inside. You can see where this could possibly crease for a big time play here. If you can get out the gate here, it's a tough it's a tough run to execute, but nonetheless, it's still a five yard gain. It's hard. The outside zone plays very hard. It's all about timing and getting it getting the running back for a feel for it. So this is the first couple times they ran it all night long. Can't blame the running back. Can't blame the offensive line. Sometimes it's just not timed up the way you'd like to see it. Here we go. We got G G H counter here. And what, let's just watch this kick out here. Watch big number 69 here. Young player. Watch the play he makes. This is impressive. So he's going to come across. He's going to come across for the kick out here on the end man on the line of scrimmage. He's just throw him out the club we've seen the gh counter all night long so just watch 69 here comes across boom i mean that's a that's a that's, that's a left guard on a corner it's not a good matchup for the defense but what a play there by the guard and we see we're pinning this all down all these down blocks are coming down he's going to gather at number seven down 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 kick out gap hinge and around and we can see where this the creases can form here. We can get this kicked out and this all washed down. We're going to have that extra hat pulling through. So keep an eye there. Watch it. We see it. We get the kick out. Blows up the entire, blows that hole up. Look at this. I mean, we have our wall built there. We have the kick out there. We have the tight end lead blocking around for the first color that shows, which will be 51. The first backer in the box. And we see good block. Miles Sanders squirts through behind him. Picks up the first down to put the dagger in it for the Eagles. Well, it looks like we're going to come out in the best formation, victory formation, take a couple knees here. I hope you guys enjoyed this three-part series. If you guys missed any parts, they're all up on the channel. But this is how the Eagles gash the Packers, the type of creative run game they use, whether it was QB bash, their trap play, their tackle wrap play. They really were able to... They really didn't get too fancy with the Packers. They really outmuscled them and was the, the more physical team and dominated the line of scrimmage all night. Appreciate you guys watching. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. I love hearing from you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.